This key. Mom must have wanted you to give this to me now. What does it open? Oh. Hey, lion. One of the drives to watching Steven Universe has always been the mysteries and lore of the show, as well as participating in the race against time to uncover its secrets. But with the conclusion of Future, it seems like we've gotten all of the answers out of the canon show that we're going to get. However, that doesn't mean that everything has been solved. There's actually a lot that we still don't know, which is why today I'm going over the top 10 unsolved Steven Universe mysteries. Be sure to leave your mystery lists in the comments below. I'm sure that we all have our own questions that we wish were answered. Number 1. How did Lion die? Perhaps one of the longest running questions has been pertaining to Lion's death. After the episode's off-colors and Lars's head, it became obvious why our favorite heart-nosed Lion had a pink pelt. And that was because, similarly to Lars, he had been killed and then revived by magical healing tears. Though unlike Lars, Lion was revived by Rose rather than Steven. This is what gave him access to that secret third dimension resting inside of his mane that Lars also has resting inside of his hair. The question isn't if Lion died but how? What was the cause of Lion's death? Was he part of Rose's original Lion Squad that we saw back in the episode Buddy's Book, or was he an entirely different place? Because organic life that is reanimated by diamond magic seems to be immortal and cannot age, it's implied that Lion died as an adult. The cause of death, however, is what is still unknown. Oh, Lion, so you were... Gosh, there's so much I want to ask you. Number two. What happened to Earth's Russia? One of the creepiest aspects of Steven Universe has always been the kindergarten and the way that the gems are made. They suck the life out of the material that they're injected into, permanently scarring and making the planet that they're made on barren. They leave humanoid-shaped holes left in the Earth, completely decimating swaths of land once they emerge by forcefully popping out of the ground. Based on this information, it may be safe to assume that the absence of Russia in Steven Universe is due to this reason. Though, if that were the case, the size of the emerging gem that caused an entire landmass to disappear must have been massive. If Russia were just a kindergarten, there would likely still be at least some landmass still present. But the fact that it's absent entirely? It really makes you think about what could have possibly happened to make it disappear. This is where I was made, dude. One day just right out of this hole. So what about the other holes? Number 3. Why was the corrupted bird monster and giant woman collecting gems? A lot of the events in Season 1 are baffling, and this one is no exception. Back in the Season 1 episode, Giant Woman, Opal defeats a giant bird-like gem monster fusion to save Steven. Inside the stomach of the monster, it's revealed that it's been collecting gems and gem shards by ingesting and bubbling them. It was never revealed why or how the gem monster was doing this, or for what purpose it needed the captured gems for. It's possible that it may have been preying on smaller corrupted gems, but it seems like this is something we won't ever get an answer to. Steven Jr! How can you eat at a time like this? Number four, what was the purpose of the Lunar Sea Spire? Yet another unresolved mystery from season one has to be the purpose and existence of the Lunar Sea Spire from the episode Cheeseburger Backpack. While also being Steven's first mission, this was also our first introduction to gem culture and how complex it is. The Lunar Sea Spire was a freestanding tower structure in the middle of the ocean. At the top, there was a shrine to the Moon Goddess. Steven's job in the episode was to place the Moon Goddess statue into the shrine, reversing the damage to the structure and keeping it above water. He failed to complete this objective, causing the spire to sink under the ocean waves and fall into complete disrepair. But the question here is why? The bismuth in a later episode revealed that the spires were built for upper-class gems to think in, but that doesn't explain the existence of the shrine or a goddess statue. You would think that the only quote-unquote gods that the gems worshipped would be the diamonds, since they were their rulers. But if there is some sort of religion in gem society, this would add further complexity to their culture that we have yet to see. See. We have to place this moon goddess statue on the top of the lunar sea spire before midnight. Without it, the whole place will fall apart! Number 5. Why was Homeworld low on resources? 
In episodes detailing the transition from Era 1 to Era 2, it's heavily implied that Homeworld is low on resources. This is hinted at in the way that Era 2 gems like Peridot are made, lacking basic gem capabilities such as shapeshifting. The diamonds seem feverish in their attempts to create new weapons such as the Cluster, as well as colonize and utilize the resources of other planets. But if they were the top and dominant alien species as it's been hinted at before in the past, why would they need all of these weapons? Even before the gem war that Rose caused with her rebellion, they were still creating warships and colonizing other planets for resources. And the question is why? What's causing them to use up so much of their resources, and what's causing them to feel like they need to create and possess geoweapons? If they aren't the only sapient alien species in the universe, then everything would make a lot more sense. Could it be possible that they were at war with another species that we weren't introduced to? Speaking of gemkind, here's another unsolved mystery. Number 6. What was the purpose of Gemkind? When describing the gems, Rebecca calls them solar-powered robots. If this is indeed true, then we can infer that the gem species had to have been made by someone or something. If they are an artificial species, an organic species would have needed to have made them or been involved in their creation. This could also explain their hatred towards organic life and their feeling towards planets like Earth that have a lot of organic life on them. If they were indeed created, then what was their purpose? Were they created to be a helpful assistant or to manage the everyday life-to-life -life of their creators. White seems to be obsessed with perfection, and that can be in part to how she was programmed. If she was created to manage the lives of her creators, there would have been no room for error. That leads us to our next and biggest question involving the gem species. Number 7. Who or what created the diamonds? As previously mentioned, the gems have been confirmed to be some sort of AI. With this knowledge comes with a bunch of implications, because it means that they would have needed to have been created by a different species. Only an extremely advanced society would have been capable of creating an AI to the level that it could learn to self-replicate and create its own society and culture. There's been speculations that the creators were the Sneeple, considering their prominent and consistent presence within the show. But but if their creators were out there, what happened to them? That seems like one of the biggest questions that we'll never get an answer to. This can't be happening. I can't have a flaw. I'm supposed to be flawless. If I'm not perfect, then who am I? I'm supposed to know better. I'm supposed to be better. I'm supposed to make everything better. Number eight. What is the Crystal Heart? Back in the episode Together Breakfast, we got a good view of the inner workings of the temple, including the center of the temple called the Crystal Heart. The Crystal Heart resembles a huge red crystal structure. Pearl stated that it is connected to the most dangerous parts of the temple. The central vein connected to the bottom of the heart leads directly down into the burning room from Rose's room. It even makes a rhythmic beating sound similar to that of what an actual heart would make. It seems to imply that the temple is somehow a living being, or at the very least, least powered by this structure. But considering that we now know that gemstones have been used to power things in the past, this leaves some mildly disturbing implications for what this structure is actually from or for. <gasps> Whoa. You really shouldn't be in here. This is the Crystal Heart. Oh, it's connected to the most dangerous areas of the temple. Number nine. What was in Rose's chest? Now, I know that you guys were probably expecting this to be at number one, but let me explain. While the contents of Rose's chest have been the cause for many discussions and fan theories, it's also probably the most predictable mystery on this list. How many of you didn't expect it to be on here? Regardless, the content of Rose's chest has been speculated since its debut in Lion 3 straight to video. And even more frustrating, in the movie, it's shown that the chest has been opened, which means that the contents of the chest have been discovered and taken, but we never saw it happen. For such a big part of the show, it's kind of surprising that it wasn't a subject of an episode. But perhaps the contents of the chest were for Steven's eyes only. Only Rebecca and the Crewniverse knows what lie inside of it now. Number 10. What does the Pyramid Temple's mural mean? One of the show's earliest unsolved mysteries was introduced to us in the season one episode, Sirius Steven. In this episode, Steven and the gems need to disable a gem mechanism powering a rotated pyramid temple maze. Steven is able to do so by dislodging the gem being used as a power source, leaving the temple incapable of defending itself. In one of the main rooms, a mural is present. This mural shows rose quartz using what appears to be a light prism to fight against another gem. There's also a bunch of other rather Rather confusing imagery in the murals, a lot of which is never explained. One of them seems to be a hint at Paradox Arc and helping defeat the cluster, but the other portions of the mural remain unexplained. 
Even with the gem that was powering the temple, it seems as though it was also involved in aiding the mural imagery. It just goes to show you that the show still has a lot of unresolved and undiscovered lore, particularly with gem war subjects. It kind of makes me sad that a lot of this is likely to remain hidden to the confines of production and writing rooms of Cartoon Network, as there was no current plans to continue expanding upon the universe of Steven Universe. But just because the show itself is over, doesn't mean that the discussion around it needs to end. So if in the future you'd like to see more videos like this from me, why not subscribe and hit that bell icon to get notifications of when I upload. Special thank you to my top tier patrons, Ambrose Rothwood, Brandon Nunes, The Lovely Ghosty, Lee Taylor, and Zachary Ansley. Because of people like them, I can continue to make content like this. And I hope to see you all in the next video. Have an amazing day, guys.